We're going to we're going to go with well, there's 14 speakers. Um, given that it's 10 o'clock, I think we'll go with two minutes. So that's a half an hour. I'm going to call the speakers. Um, try to stay three in advance, just so you know. So that as soon as one person finishes, you're you're ready to go. Um, so the first three speakers, it'll be Sabine Hack, followed by Rusty Reeves, and then John Davenport. Hello, my name is Sabina Hack. I live in South Orange, and I have four children in the school district. I want to make some comments about the middle school transformation. There are some positive aspects to the proposal. For some students, the proposal will increase access to more rigorous and challenging classwork. That is great. The proposal also very specifically outlines steps designed to not let struggling students fail. This is fantastic and unusual. As a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I work with schools and parents to create individualized support programs for struggling students. Most middle schools do not have a ready-made, formalized structure that allows for more time within the school day to keep students from falling behind. I applaud this change and believe that it will benefit individual students and the classrooms they inhabit. Unfortunately, this transformation proposal does not address the academic needs of many of our students. For as long as I have been attending Board of Education meetings, there have consistently been parents coming before you to let you know about the lack of challenge in the curriculum for their bright children. For years, you have been hearing about children who are bored and languishing in classrooms in which they earn easy A's. You have taken no action to change this problem. Our top students do not have access to coursework that is challenging for them. A vote for the middle school transformation proposal as it stands is a vote that says it is okay to address the educational needs of some of our students while ignoring the needs of others. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rusty Reeves and then John Davenport. Rusty Reeves, South Orange. Uh, I've spent my career to date as a psychiatrist caring for poor people, and mostly poor black people, treating prisoners and troubled adolescents. Speaking to what, the mic. What we have in this deleveling drama is displacement. We don't want to acknowledge the reason for black kids' underachievement, which is broadly culture and single parent families. And so we find something more acceptable to blame. In this case, it's the old trope of white racism, whether inadvertent or purposeful. Although a school district has to strive uh, to help all its students, and I would love to see uh, black kids perform better for both altruistic and frankly selfish reasons, it's unfair to make high achieving students, and many of those are black in this district, responsible for the choices how, of how other people choose to live their lives. This board, in considering uh, this levels uh, movement, uh, has promised to move slowly and deliberately and examine the data. But when you got the flimsiest of data from the district, you grabbed it and ran with it because it, you thought it told you what you wanted to believe. And we saw that coming uh, the entire time. You're now going to uh, approve this uh, so-called transformation, and I understand that. Um, uh, but. It, was, it is irresponsible how you've uh, regarded the data, or actually not even had data to support what you're about to approve. You haven't considered choice as an alternative, as Mr. Eastman uh, proposes. Uh, I'm very concerned that this is not the end, because it could go further than this if Dr. Osborne wants to go further than what he proposes right now in high school. And that's when I really get worried. If we go beyond what he's already proposing, then I really think we're gonna damage kids' education in the town. We've got a nice thing going here, but it's fragile. I don't wanna lose it. Thank you. Thank you. John Davenport, followed by Michael Goldberg, and then Nancy Gold. John Davenport from Maplewood. It's a little sad that I had to wait till 10 o'clock. I wish Public Speaks had been earlier. I think a lot of people wanted to talk tonight. Let me be quick. 
I'd like to congratulate the seven members who control the school board presently and what I see is the political machine behind them for holding lots of public hearings in October through March, allegedly to hear public feedback on the data presented to claim that seventh grade level up was a success this year and also feedback on the district's proposals to de-level eighth grade and ninth grade core subjects and high school electives beyond that. But in fact, this was, I think, a huge waste of time, despite maybe the best of intentions, because not a, a single alteration was made in the proposals in light of the huge problems in the data on every wide public criticism from many corners. I think that you are well on track to serve in our federal Senate, if I might put it that way, given your proven inability to accept a single iota of compromise in response to my own very modest proposals that you consider expanding the planned eighth grade acceleration option to other subjects beyond English language arts, you responded by eliminating the option for acceleration in English language arts. Bravo, just the spirit that has put our federal debt where it now stands, to use another example. Similarly, our presence here I think is merely symbolic, even at this late hour, since the action tonight is a mere rubber stamp. After all, the, schools, the high school's guidance department held an assembly last week to tell all students how deleveled courses will work even before tonight's vote. Now I give you full credit for the extremism that I think has brought us to this point. You press your agenda to its maximum without seeking any middle ground. It's always interesting to see politicians, yes I'm sorry, I think I have to call you that at this point, throw out the baby with the bathwater that rather than fix the problems that all reasonable people recognize in an existing system. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. I will not say thank you in return. Michael Goldberg, followed by Nancy Gould, and then Ruth Lowenkron. Hello. <clears throat> Michael Goldberg from South Orange. <clears throat> I come to you tonight as a parent of a fourth grader, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the Board of Trustees. However, as a member of the Board of Trustees, um, even though it seems like a, a foregone conclusion of what's going to happen tonight, it is my duty and my obligation to speak out about anything that is detrimental to our town and which, and which impacts our ability to compete as the premier suburb of New York City. When people choose a place to live, there's nothing more important than that decision than the quality and reputation of the school district. I'm here to urge you to reject this proposal to de-level the middle school and the beginning of a similar process in the high school, which I feel is detrimental to our kids detrimental to our school district, and detrimental to our community. In addition, as a parent of a fourth grader who is rapidly approaching her middle school years, your actions are deep, deeply personal to me, as my daughter will be at the epicenter of this experiment in social engineering. It is a reality of life that kids, like all people, are all very different, and, that's, and that different kids need different things in order to thrive. Some kids need to be pushed, some kids need to be challenged, and some kids simply need extra attention. I speak from my own personal experience that your proposed one-size-fits-all model will do nothing more than bore the kids at the top and frustrate the kids at the bottom. Over time, those families will leave the district and our community or not be attracted to come here in the first place. That's detrimental to our kids and to our entire community. Looking forward, as these deleveled kids leave our district for other schools, they will be in for an incredibly rude awakening when they face the harsh realities of an incredibly competitive world that we live in. They will have grown up learning that you do not need to work hard to advance because one size fits all. This is detrimental to our kids and to our entire community. Let me be clear, every child should have the opportunity to excel and be challenged if they want it. However, what is being proposed here is nothing short of a march to mediocrity. We can and must do better. In a, in a letter dated June 8th, 20... Time. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. 